Not a pixie wet guy. What's this one going to say? <laughs> so, yeah, I was making fun of Oren. I do work at Target. I'm a struggling millennial in this economy. 400 applications out there, got a master's degree, and I work at Target. Life's great. And I was in there the other day, and I was looking. They're introducing some new brands recently. One of them for homeware, it's called Made by Design. I'm looking at it thinking, well, yeah. <laughs> what else would it be? I went down to the infant section, made by accident. Oh. <laughs> went down to clothing, made by starving children sweatshop workers. I think that's enough for my target right now. <laughs> now, I have to ask, why is it that no matter who it is or what they say, there's no such thing as good dating advice? You could be thinking to yourself, you know, if I were just more confident and lost a few pounds, I could probably pull any girl I wanted. Someone from the back says, I agree. Well, shut up, nobody asked you. I was stupid for thinking that would work. <laughs> Most of the people that try and give me dating advice are always these 50, 60 year old couples that try and tell me what worked in the 70s, are not aware of the changing climate, that people do not make out at drive in theaters anymore. <laughs> I think the worst advice they always give is where they want you to pick people up. Well, why don't you just try and talk to someone at the grocery store? Okay, I, I get it, but there's really only so much bonding that two people can do over cabbage. <laughs> hey, girl, that's a nice head you got there. <laughs> Thanks, it's green. <laughs> so you want to go back to my place, smoke some jazz cabbage? <laughs> <laughs> They're always like, well, you know, if you go to church, you'd meet a lot of people there. Well, yeah, that's true, but I kind of have this mental block where I don't want to go to church if my sole objective there is to pick up women. Because I just know that later on I'm going to die, go to heaven, and so, yeah, sorry, Trey, I can't let you in. Well, why not? There was this whole 20 year stretch where I went to church. I said, yeah, you're doing it just to pick up women. Well, no, I praised you too. Okay, look, just saying, oh God, she's really cute, does not constitute a prayer. Okay? <laughs> now, I wonder how my parents think this would work. Probably go to a Catholic church because they use real wine. So I get a nice candlelit dinner. She says, oh, Trey, this is great. This wine's fantastic. Where'd you get it? Oh, it's left over from the last communion. <laughs> so what's in the basket? Did you make dinner? Uh, well, yes, of course. I pull a cloth off of the basket and reveal a foot tall mountain with communion wafers. Surprise, honey, we're having the big man himself for dinner. <laughs> and they always say, well, just go to the library. The library, a place where introverts go to get books, which is a one-person activity done in silence. How did you think this was going to work, Mom? Well, I don't know. What, did you just want me to go down to the erotica section, like see someone get reading Fifty Shades of Grey because their standards of men are significantly diminished they can't get any worse? Well, oh, congratulations, I see you like Christian Grey. How would you like someone who's just a step up from that? <laughs> now, men, we're pretty naturally oblivious creatures as is. One thing you should know about me, I'm on the autism spectrum. Don't worry, I never tell that at first anymore because then you feel bad for not laughing. Now, men, we're naturally oblivious creatures when it comes to dating as is. We have what I like to call three layers of oblivion. This is how many hints a woman has to drop before the man finally gets it. Layer one, pretty innocuous. The lady says, oh, hey, Trey, I was thinking about you the other day. This tells any well-adjusted man to say, well, I was thinking about you too. This just tells me to say, oh, I'm sorry. Now that little awkward silence right there, don't mind that, I'm just bummering. Then we get to layer two, she says, we should hang out sometime. Well, adjusted man says, yes, we should, makes a date. Little old me says, yes, we should, and buffers. <laughs> then we get to layer three, where she says, what are you doing later? This is where any other well-adjusted man gets it, says, why, taking you to dinner, of course. This is where I lay out my entire itinerary, watching Mario Kart for three hours, and watching Netflix until I pass out. <laughs> now, autistic people, we have an extra two layers of oblivion. Ladies, if you get to these levels, bless your patience, we're worth it. Layer four is where she admits that she's interested. I still don't get it. She says, so I got a new bed. Would you like to help me break it in? I think, oh, you're an insomnia and you don't want people to know. <laughs> I got you. Until finally, 
She gets upset, goes straight to level five and says, no trip, I want you to take me back to my place and ride me like a cowboy. Oh. Oh, uh, oh, I get it. We were both pretty disappointed though when I showed up with a saddle. <laughs> That's all my time, folks. Dude. I was 